Hello. Today, let's talk about little children. Our Gospel text is from the 18th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. It begins with the disciples asking Jesus, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? I imagine that they were thinking about themselves. Which one of them was great, like Moses the lawgiver, or great like David the warrior king? Which one of them was the greatest? Once again, Jesus gave his disciples an unexpected answer. It must have come as quite a shock. Jesus called a little child to himself, and he set the child before them. In New Testament Greek, this word child is paideon. It is a general term for an infant, or a toddler, or a very young child. Jesus uses this word four times in four verses to talk about greatness in the kingdom. Matthew 18, verses 2 through 5, And he called a child to himself and set him before them, and said, Truly I say to you, unless you are converted and become like children, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever then humbles himself as this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. So, what does Jesus see? Yesterday was my wife's birthday. We went out to dinner at a family restaurant, and I spotted a young family with little children. Oh, paideia, I thought to myself. The parents, I think, were in their 30s. They had three children. One was a newborn who wanted to be held and fed the whole night. Mom and Dad took turns holding and feeding him. The next was a three- or four-year-old. This one got ice cream all over her face. After eating with a spoon, there was still some left, so she picked up her bowl and began to lick it. But her face and her hands became covered with ice cream. She was wet and sticky, and she dropped and broke her glass bowl. So she got up to retrieve the pieces, but Dad jumped up and told her to stay in her chair. He did not want her to get cut by the pieces of glass. The third child was five or six. She amused herself with crayons, coloring a children's menu that she had been given. But evidently she had a rash because she often scratched herself and seemed uncomfortable. What does Jesus see when he looks at his children? He sees that we need his help. Children are needy. The very youngest ones are completely dependent. They cannot even feed themselves. They must be held and loved, changed and fed. They require constant attention. And it doesn't get much easier as the children get older. When a child becomes mobile, she or he really starts getting into mischief. Of course, when children become sick, they absolutely need a parent's care. In this Gospel lesson, Jesus is telling us that we are his spiritual children. Before coming to faith, we were spiritually unborn. We could not birth ourselves. We could not save ourselves. We come to faith not by ourselves. God births us by His Word and holy baptism. God creates faith in our hearts. After we're born by water and the Spirit, we depend upon God to protect us and provide for us. Our enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. But we are spiritual sheep. We wander and stray. We get lost and hurt. Spiritual sheep are not too bright, but they are very vulnerable. All of this Jesus sees clearly. But this truth is counterintuitive to us. It's hard for us to admit that we are merely children, spiritual toddlers, frequently needing to have our diapers changed. That is, we need to get washed up by baptismal waters, and then we need to be cleaned repeatedly by confession of sins and God's forgiveness. Also, we need to be fed regularly. That is, we need to be nourished 
by God's word and his holy supper. This is what Jesus sees, for he sees us spiritually. And no matter how long we've been Christians, we're still his needy children. So, who are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? The greatest disciples humble themselves and see themselves as they are, children, needy and dependent upon the Heavenly Father. Well, there's one more step, and we may not like this one. Children are needy, and the greater their need, the greater they are in the kingdom. That is, the greater their spiritual deficiency, the greater their need for attention and care from the Heavenly Father and from the other children of the kingdom. You see, the family in the restaurant was lovely and precious, but if the three-year-old had fallen on the glass and gotten cut, their situation would have changed dramatically. In the same way, some of God's children experience spiritual cuts and crises. They need emergency care, too, from God and from His people. These injured children of God may be kind of prickly and offensive because they've been spiritually hurt. But to God, that means that they're even more precious. They're among the greatest in the kingdom. Point two, what do we see? From this perspective, all of Matthew chapter 18 is a commentary on becoming like little children, paideia, and seeing others as little children too. So, verses 1 through 5 give Christ's initial teaching that we are God's precious children. Jesus is teaching us to see that we are spiritually in need. Because of our spiritual weakness, we need a loving Heavenly Father, and by God's grace, we have one. Also, we should be humble in our relationship with other children. With a heart of forgiveness and love, we can act as little Christ's, caring for other children as our Heavenly Father cares for us. In verses 6 through 10, Jesus teaches us that sometimes we have especially poor spiritual eyesight when viewing ourselves and others. We do not see that they are spiritually hurting children. As a result, we sometimes ignore and even harm those around us. We do not see them as vulnerable spiritual children. So we can be especially selfish and sinful. We can be insensitive and damage their hurting places. After all, their spiritual pain is invisible to us. It's even possible that we can injure them spiritually and never even be aware of what we've done. Some children need emergency care, but we may leave them bleeding at the restaurant, so to speak. Verses 11 through 14 explain that some of God's precious children wander away and get themselves lost. How easily we isolate ourselves, how quickly the lonely child hears the wrong messages and believes the lying voices. It's possible to lose sight of how precious this little child is to the Heavenly Father. Listen carefully when you pray. It may be the Heavenly Father's will to call you to help that lost sheep and bring that child back to the family table. In verses 15 to 20, Jesus explains how quickly we get offended with one another. It's sad to see how easily things get out of control with tempers flaring and emotions rising and relationships getting damaged. When that happens, we typically want to ju justify ourselves. Many people will read these verses in Matthew 18 as a playbook for revenge. But remember that this chapter is about hurting children and how their Heavenly Father desires that they be brought back into communion with Him. Read these verses as instructions for care and reconciliation. And notice that there is no time limit on any of these steps in the process. So be patient. Even if the person is six feet tall and 200 pounds, remember, this is God's precious little child, Pideon. The final section of the chapter is the assigned gospel reading for next week. It's a doozy. We will review it carefully next time. Conclusion. A new pair of glasses. I don't know how many of you 
saw the movie National Treasure starring Nicolas Cage. At one point, Cage's character finds a pair of special glasses, supposedly made by Benjamin Franklin. Now, Franklin did invent the bifocal, but he did not invent these movie glasses. The special spectacles operated as a decoder by using some special colored ink on parchment and some special colored lenses in the glasses. Some words and images became visible that people could not see without the glasses. In other words, the glasses enabled the wearer to see what other people could not see. In this gospel passage, Jesus is giving you a pair of God's special glasses. God's glasses help you to see yourself as a paideon, a child of God, and to know that his hand of blessing is upon you and his Holy Spirit is within you. When you see yourself as his child, Jesus says, you are among the greatest in his kingdom. For you recognize your spiritual weakness and sinfulness and spiritual foolishness. This helps you to receive God's forgiveness and love. This also helps you to be humble and understanding in your relationships and to give God's forgiveness and love to other people. Also, God's special glasses help you to see others as God's precious paideia, who are children of God too. The more prickly and offensive they are, the more needy and distressed is their spiritual life, and the greater they are in God's kingdom. Did you see that? They may have endured any kind of spiritual sickness, trauma, or chronic disease. They need your care. Enhanced by God's spiritual glasses, that is the Word of God, you can be more aware of his or her tendency toward isolation and loneliness. You may become used as the hand or heart of Christ and the instrument for the Word of Christ to be shared. Through you, the lost one may find his or her way back to the family of God and the table of the Lord. Finally, you may find yourself dealing with an aggressive and angry personality. Their pain may spill out all over you and make you uncomfortable and want to run away. If you can, allow the word of Christ to give you God's glasses to see their hidden hurts. Oftentimes, a person will appear hard or hot-tempered, it's no surprise. When you have a wound, it often gets a hard scab over it to protect it. And when it's covered with a bandage, it's often hot and sensitive to the touch. Can you see that this person may be greatly in need? Do you also see that this person is one who is precious to the Heavenly Father? Remember that the one who has the greatest need is one who is among the greatest in God's kingdom. Perhaps you can be part of the emergency care that God sends to help. The disciples of Jesus once came to the Lord to ask, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus offered them a new pair of glasses. He placed a little child before them, Pideon. They saw one who was needy and weak and precious. This one is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Does this child remind you of anyone else you know? Amen.